Hello, my friend. If you have experienced rejection, othering, a sense of people pushing you away or misunderstanding you, this one's for you. My name is Danielle Lynn. For many years, I was a business strategist, so I learned a lot about human psychology. But I also taught myself a lot about hypnotherapy, got certified in it, and have trained myself in a number of different modalities that's given me deep perspectives on the world, the nature of why we are the way we are. And I am inspired often to share these perspectives with you in the hopes that you will use them in the ways that help you feel your most empowered. So one of the reasons I felt really inspired to talk about this topic is before I created this video today, I sat with myself and I said, what would be of the most service to share in my current video? And I felt really guided and inspired to share something from my own heart. In the past, that's actually been challenging for me. It was challenging for me to feel as though I could be vulnerable and not just vulnerable with people around me, but vulnerable in a way where I'm sharing it with you right now, my friend and everyone else who feels inspired to tune in. But something that was reflected more and more to me recently and something that I myself have experienced in life is the stories that I hear from those that I am tuning into, from those that I would like to receive wisdom or perspectives from, the stories are often what creates deep connection and impact. And it's in those vulnerable stories that we often connect not only with new insight and inspiration, but it helps connect all of us in this thread of shared experiences of being human. And so as a step towards that, I'm feeling inspired to share with you today a little bit of my own story as it relates to feeling rejected or feeling othered. So one of the first things I'll say is if you're someone watching this video or if you've been tuning in for a while, then from my perspective, you are someone who is very empathetic. You are someone who is connected to the, let's say, expansion of consciousness on this planet at this time. You are someone who cares about more than perhaps just your individualized experience. And as a result, thinking as a result, let's just say as a result, there is more than a likely chance that you've gone through some pretty interesting experiences in your life. Experiences that may have deepened your empathy by you having people not be empathetic towards you, or perhaps you have developed a sense of caring for others because perhaps others hadn't been there for you. And although this isn't our only way to learn in reality, there is something very poignant about experiencing and embodying experiences of otherness. So let me share one from my own story. I've always felt an affinity for friends and friendship. Friendship is very tender and near and dear to my heart. When I was growing up as a kid, I had certain friends that I had regarded as best friends. But there was a time that I remember in high school, I think it was, where I had seen, uh, I went to an event. So I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a best friend, someone I regard as a best friend, who went to a different school than me, but we went to the same sort of church or church functions. And I hadn't seen her in a while. And then I saw her at one of these functions. She was at a, a whiteboard you know, with a few other kids. And, and I yelled out to her, I was like, hey, hey, I'm very excited to see her. But then her response was to look back at me and, and whisper something into someone else's ear and laugh and like, you know, snicker. And I remember the, the pang of pain I felt in that moment, the, the confusion, the sense of 
what just happened? The feeling of, of almost betrayal. It was very disorienting for me, for young Danielle at the time. And was a memory that had, a, had shook me to my core at the time. This feeling of being, um, you know, othered by, by someone I had felt I had carried very close to my heart. And this is something that I have worked with within myself and, and come to a sense of, um, it's something that I can talk about now without having the same level of pain or a knowing that I had felt at that time. But then through my years, I had different experiences of, of feeling othered or feeling rejected. And what was interesting is when I started doing work on myself, I started to realize that some of the behaviors and tendencies I had, like one of the driving motivations for me to learn about human psychology was because I wanted to understand others so that I could feel protected, so that I could feel as though, oh, I, I understand what you have going on so I can um, account for this and strategize for it and, and know how to navigate this situation. Or, you know, there were, there were ways that, let's see, I would like to, uh, I actually leaned into my eccentricness, my strangeness, because I wore it for many years as a mask, right? If people simply write me off as eccentric or strange, then I could tell myself in the back of the mind, well, they're not really rejecting me, they're just rejecting a mask I put out there. But I put a mask there in the beginning anyway to prevent people from coming in. So it was, it was a shield, but it was also a barrier for people to come in. And many of us have these, consciously or unconsciously, we have barriers or shields or masks or ways that we operate in the world in response to potentially very old experiences that we had sometimes as children or in other areas of our lives that we may still be playing out to this day in protection of a part of ourselves that still feels the need or the desire to be safe and to be held and to be loved and cared for. And at the time, whatever um, sequence we put ourselves through was the response that we knew how to do. And for a long time, for example, keeping myself safe was having, you know, this, this deep understanding of psychology or being able to be the strange, mysterious one that people, you know, couldn't get close to unless I let them in. What I personally discovered for myself with the experience of othering is that when people other you, it's really a lot more about them and what they can or cannot accept within themselves. And we might still feel hurt or sad, you know, if someone we care about or just someone doesn't understand us in general. But for the most part, my consistent experience with others has been that other people's behaviors towards us, whether you perceive them as good or bad, says a lot more about their state of being and how they are choosing to see you than it, than it says about who you are at the core of your being. Now, other people's consistent responses to us can give us information and feedback that we can consider and we can digest and we can introspect on. But most of the time, I invite anyone who's going through a challenging time with others to consider the, mm, the, the core of who you are, who you are interacting with. Consider the person who is giving you this feedback and what you know of the kind of life they live what you know of the kind of person they are choosing to be right now. Because I say you can know a lot about a person not based on just what they say or what they claim, but look at their actions and not just their actions towards you, but the consistent moment to moment, day to day actions that they choose to engage in. This gives you a lot of context 
for the person you are working with and interfacing with. And that can be hard for some of us, especially when it comes to people who we're in relationship with or people we are family members with. And, you know, some of those can be some of our most sticky areas to navigate because they, they really can provide a lot of mirrors. And especially if it's family, they were oftentimes part of, um, they may have been certain triggers or programs for some of the stories that we might still carry around today. So it's an interesting experience to come face to face with those as well. So what I'll share with you about my own navigation in this place and how it comes to relating to uh, other people and feelings of rejection or, or feelings of othering is that the more that I've embraced myself and the more that I have said yes to myself and the more that I have been willing to show up in that way authentically in these videos, in my day to, li in my day, -to -day life, in anything that I'm doing, um, the more I am connecting with people who celebrate me, who celebrate themselves, who authentically see me. Now, there were some times where I'd then have step away from relationships from others I had a 10 year relationship that ended a few years ago because I started to make this journey and I started to say more yeses to myself and then it was no longer resonant to be in this situation. I've had very long friendships and sometimes it was very challenging to step away from those. And I'd feel that very deeply. So I'm sharing with you that sometimes this process of choosing ourselves can mean uh, long-standing relationship shift and there's nothing inherently bad or wrong about that it doesn't even make the other person bad or wrong it just means that the energy or the place that you guys are operating at may be in a, in a different focus at the present moment but when you allow for that and when you don't take it so personally when you don't take the separation so personally it gives you a lot of space to breathe, to be with yourself, and then to start saying yes to more, let's say, resonant relationships that resonate with the person who you are choosing to be, the person when you are honoring yourself and loving yourself, you're, you're saying more yeses to relationships that do the same because you're the one that sets the tone and the pattern for what is a yes and what is a no in your life. And so my friend, I hope that this has been extraordinarily helpful. I will have some resources in the description area. And if you are feeling inspired to do another, uh, to join my next flow-based container, this is a group experience that I walk people through for synchronicity, please go ahead and check the description box. And if at the time of watching this, uh, that specific one isn't available, then I invite you to check as well for what might be. Thank you again so much for tuning in and please do like, share and subscribe. I always love hearing your comments and we'll talk more soon.